Hello. Am I weirdly framed? I feel like I'm weirdly framed, but I can't faff with it any further. I have done all the faffing I can. No further faffing will be entered into. So, it is all weaving all the time again this week, because uh, that is what I think about. Weaving. I think about weaving a lot. Um, sometimes when I'm at work, they want me to think about work, but I feel like that's a bit of an imposition. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago I showed you this, which is the galah scarf, pink and grey, like a galah, which is a parrot native to Australia which happens to be pink and grey. And so that has been wet finished now. I hadn't wet finished it last week because I hadn't twisted the fringes because I lost my fringe twister, which I have found, obviously, because I've twisted my fringes. Now, this is cotton and viscose. And I gave it a hot wash for the cotton. I don't know if you're supposed to hot wash viscose. Nothing bad happened, so it's probably fine. But what has happened is a little bit of shrinkage. I'm trying to show you in a kind of even light, but my light's very dappled. Um, but what has happened is the solid squares have, because of the shrinkage, have kind of closed in a little bit and look more solid. So I'm really happy with that because that's the effect that I wanted. A mix of solid colour squares and a mix of the pink and grey. So that is done. That is finished. Fringe is twisted, wet finished good to go. Now, the 80s has exploded on an arcade carpet. Thank you so much to that quite loud truck. Um, 80s has exploded on an arcade carpet from last week. I have wet finished it and it's done something just a little bit exciting. I'm a little bit excited about it. So I'll just organise my bag. You'd think I'd be able to do that a little bit more smoothly by now, but no. So the side with the warp floats looks like this now. Because when you wet finish, um, sometimes yarns shrink and shift and just change change a little bit where they're, where they're sitting. So the side with the warp floats, as I said, has these solid, hello, has these solid textures down each side, almost like a solid stripe of texture, um, which is excellent. I'm very excited about that. And then on the other side with the weft floats, showing you that so smoothly, there we go. We've got this great texture. Look how that happened. I'm so excited. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen because I don't sample. Um, so let me show you a little bit closer up. So these little weft floats, these little groups of groups of two, yes, I can count to two. So groups of two weft floats there, and that has pulled in and shrunk a little bit, and that has opened up the warp so that you can see the warp through the weave. It's a little bit meshy, but it's given me this great texture all down the length of it. I'm so happy with this. This could not have gone better. I'm just, I love this. This, I love this so much. I can't even speak with how much I love this. So this is finished and it's fabulous and it's much more exciting than I was expecting it to be. Look at the other side again. So yeah, pretty happy with that. I don't know if you can tell. Now, last week I had on the loom, Last week I had, last week on the loom, last week on the loom I had my triple Fibonacci and you can't really tell that it's a Fibonacci and that's fine but what I do have is the stripe effect so I'm hauling that um, out of my bag very professionally. I'm getting this back in my bag. I must get a basket. I did used to have a basket. I wonder what happened to that. It was great. Anyway, <laughs> this is off the loom now. It's not wet finished because of course it's not but that, am I in shot? Yes. So that is how that has come out. I'm shouting because I don't know that the microphone microphone can pick. I had two coffees at lunch. Um, may have been a mistake. I keep kind of falling over my face a little bit. So that is ready for wet finishing. It's not like you won't look at that and go, ooh, someone's done a triple Fibonacci stripe on that. But it has given me a good colour effect through the grayscale. I'm really happy with how the grayscale interacts with itself. So I'll show you that a little bit close up so that you can see because I do have quite a lot of that left over. So to know that it, it works well, it almost makes a sort of tartan by itself. Um, that might be a project in and of itself, just with the grayscale. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's an interesting look. We'll wet finish it and see what happens. There's not gonna be any texture on this because it is just a plain weave. Um, but I'll show you next week. I've twisted the fringe though. I'm very organized. I'm not good at showing you fringes. I must have a practice. But anyway, the fringe is twisted. Uh, so that will get a wet finish and I'll show you that next week. So on the loom at the moment, I have something else. So shall we have a look at that? I'm not actually very far into this. The hem stitching is maybe an inch and a half under my finger, which is at the bottom of the frame. Hello. So this is a, another pickup stick pattern. 
and it's a little bit wonky there because I've had some tension issues but we're going to roll with it anyway. I've only just started and I'm having some tension issues. That's because I had trouble um, winding it on at tension but it's working. It should be okay once I cut it off and if it isn't then I meant to do that. So this is a mix of cottons. This is a cotton in the warp. It is Bellissimo Orchard. Um, I would show you the label but I have thrown it out because I'm not very organized. The weft is this, which is not what I meant to show you. I meant to actually show you the yarn. There we go. No, that's not the label. Okay. No, that's also not the label. Okay, there we go. Fiddlesticks Cedar. The exciting thing about this is it's not discontinued. I can get more if I need it. So if I do run out, I can rip, I can get some more. It's not. It's about $7 a ball, so it's fine. Um, it's very exciting to be using a yarn that is not discontinued. And the ribbon yarn, I couldn't tell you. It's from my aunt's stash. She had a few different ribbon yarns like this, but they're all different brands. So I don't know what this one was. It didn't have a label on it. Now, the way I've warped this up is to get this ribbon yarn doing warp floats on the other side. You can see my pickup stick pattern through here where I'm creating weft floats. So on the other side, that's creating warp floats where the ribbon is to the forefront. So I've got the ribbon just in slots. Uh, let me see if I can... No, that doesn't really show. Let me just change my camera angle slightly and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So many camera angles in this video. Check me out. So I'm going to try and explain what I'm doing. Uh, it may not make sense. If you need clarification, do ask in the comments. But, you know, be nice about it. And I'll see what I can do about explaining it better. But I make no promises. So my plan is to have all of the ribbon as part of the, pa of the pick-up stick pattern. So on the other side of this... These are creating warp floats, so just little dashes of solid colour without the weft coming through it. And that's what's happening. I've got the weft floats here, so they are skipping on the other side, so there's no weaving on top of the ribbon on the other side. Now to do that, I've got the ribbons just in slots, except every third slot I have, let me see if I can pick one up, I have some cotton. And the reason for that is to anchor the weft thread because if you don't have that you end up with not little dashes like this across you end up with just one big long thread and that's not what I want because I want this to be a wearable scarf and a big long thread the width of that's a very close up and my hands not helping anyway I don't want just a big float I want this weft thread to be anchored and you can maybe see uh, just no nope, just there you can see that anchor point there where that slot thread there has caused the weft to be nicely anchored so that it's not just one big float. I don't know if that makes sense. So basically when I use the pickup stick for, I don't know if that shows because it's a direct on top, it doesn't really. Um, let me see if I can get the shuttle through and show you. So if I get the shuttle through here, which is not due to happen, and I'm on a very funny angle, there we go, you might be able to see, yep, so you can see now that I've got the shuttle through that all of the ribbons are down underneath it. They're not part of the over-under part of the weaving. And these anchor threads are sitting on top to hold that thread down when I change the shed. Did that make sense? I don't know how this is going to come out. As I said, I've had some tension problems, but I think it's probably going to be okay. And hopefully I can show you next week. And that's all I have for you this week. There is no progress on the little loom at the moment. I haven't had a chance this week to sit down and work on it. It's just been one of those weeks. It's been a very full week. I'm hoping this coming week will be a little bit less full so that I can do more weaving, but we'll see. Um, so yes, the, the little loom looks exactly like it did last week. And next week is also temperature snake time because it will be the end of October. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, so for now, take care of yourself and I will see you next week. Bye for now.